In this tutorial, we're going to dive into more depth into how to use the PTZ controller in Wirecast Pro to control your PTZ and robotic cameras. If you're not sure how to connect your cameras or get them on the network, we have other tutorials available on our resources page at telestream.net slash wirecast slash resources. Okay, let's assume you've already plugged in your camera, you've got its IP address, and you've connected it to control it through Visca over IP using the PTZ controller. Once Wirecast and the camera are talking, you should see the status as connected. You can confirm this by clicking anywhere in the controller area and the camera should respond. Use the home button to quickly jump the camera back to its home position. There are many different ways to control the camera, including different views inside the PTZ controller window. What we're looking at right now is the map view. This is roughly a representation of a 360 degree field that the camera can control in, both the up, down, left, and right positions. You can also control the zoom of the camera using the zoom slider below, as well as the focus, even the exposure of the camera using shutter and iris sliders. Again, if you want to go back to the baseline position, just click the home button. White balance is also automatic, but you can set it to manual or different color spectrum controls. And the same is true for exposure controls. You can do automatic, manual, or prioritize the shutter or the iris and so forth. Okay, let's look quickly at some of the other control schemes inside the PTZ controller window. In addition to the map view, you also have the D-pad view. This is much like the up and down, left and right buttons on your keyboard. In fact, Wirecast and the PTZ controller are meant to respond using the up, down, left and right arrows on your keyboard, which is great for fine tuning the last few spots on a particular camera angle you're trying to get. You also have the analog view. This is much like a click and drag area, almost like a joystick. So you can get X, Y, and left and right positions or diagonal commands at the same time. Another great thing is that Wirecast and the cameras respond to pressing more than one key at the same time. So if I want to press my up and my right arrow keys at the same time, I can get a diagonal pan or tilt. I can pan and tilt at the same time by going in the opposite direction. It's useful for finding different camera positions that involve changes in both the X and Y dimensions. Now that we've looked at some of the control options in the PTZ control window, let's use them to create some different camera angles we can quickly cut to or transition back and forth between inside Wirecast. This is great if you only have a single camera or you want to use one PTZ camera to cover multiple angles in a live production environment, making it seem like you actually have more than one camera operator. The process is quite simple. All you need to do is position the camera where you want it to go. Fine tune it, zoom it in, and set the camera angle exposure and other settings that you want. When you have the camera angle just the way you want it, choose a preset number and then save it. I'm gonna save this close up of the pen as preset number one. Now let's find another camera angle we want to save a preset to. I'm gonna quickly hit the home button to sort of zoom out the camera and get my bearings. I'm then going to switch over to the analog pad and I'm going to scroll up and over to the left and a little too fast. Let's go back to the deep, the map view and let's dial that in just a little bit. We're gonna zoom in just a tad. Use my arrow keys to sort of fine tune the position. There we go. And obviously our focus and exposure is off. So we're gonna set that to auto and that should bring everything down a little bit. And we're gonna save this as preset number two. 
So now I have a close up of the pen as well as a close up of myself in profile saved as my two presets. And that's really all we need for this tutorial. But of course these cameras can save hundreds of presets. So now let's add them to our project in Wirecast and I'm going to show you how you can quickly switch back and forth between them as if they were different cameras just like you normally do inside Wirecast. I've already added my camera once as a source, but there's no preset already associated with this particular thumbnail on the timeline. So in order to do that, we just go to our shot layer properties, drop down the PTZ arrow, and we're going to enable the preset recall. By default, all the presets start out at zero. This is preset zero, which is just staring at my ceiling. I want to assign this to preset one. If you still have a blinking cursor in this window, it will not take. You need to hit the tab button to inform Wirecast that you are in fact serious and yes, you want preset one, not preset zero to be the one that you assign to this camera angle. All right, let's do it again. We're going to add our camera again as a source, in this case, my Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And you'll notice it's a perfect duplicate of the current camera angle. However, I haven't actually assigned a preset to this camera angle. So in this case, we're just again, check the enable preset recall and we're gonna change this to two. We'll tap our tab key and now we've assigned this to camera angle two, which is the close up of me. And I can quickly select them and Wirecast will automatically tell the camera to go back to that other position. If we go back to the other camera angle, Again, Wirecast and the camera will automatically communicate and the camera will jump to the new position. Now, what happens if I have one of these camera angles live? I now have my profile shot live in the audience or the live output window. So if I click on the first camera angle, is the camera going to move to that position, disrupting my live shot and making a mess? Actually, no. In fact, in this case, Wirecast recognizes that the camera is already live and that even though you want to jump to another position, it won't actually do that until you force this new shot to go live, just like a normal camera. If we force it live, now Wirecast will go live and show all the messy camera movements. In some cases, you want that because it looks great. It looks like you're automatically changing the camera. Other times you may not want to show that camera motion. In that case, it's useful to probably have a second camera you can use so you can cut back and forth both between your PTZ camera and your wide shot or a static camera angle to hide your camera motions. So whichever way you decide to use it, this basically makes your Wirecast workflow much like it is with any other type of camera. Except in this case, this one camera can be many, 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 many cameras. I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching this quick tutorial on how to use the Wirecast PTZ controller in Wirecast Pro. If you have questions or you wanna see other videos and resources, check out our resources page at telestream.net slash resources. Thanks for watching.